On the last episode, during one of the Jinjo missions, we collected the Whatnot book from Cameo Elements of Power, but that is not the only reference to that game in this game. I guess you could say Cameo herself makes a cameo, because if we come right up here under this delicious dishes sign, next to Humble Wumba's shop, or not that one, it's actually this window here. If we go here and go first person, you can see a very blurry and low res image of Cameo herself on the front of this magazine, and also on front of that magazine, kind of behind a glare. But if we go right in the middle, you can also see there is Joanna from Gosh Dang Perfect Dark. And not only that, this one is very low res as well, but right there is actually a picture of Conquer. Now, it's very hard to make it out, but maybe you guys can see it. You gotta squint a little bit, but there is Conquer. Anyways, hello and welcome to more Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Last time we started off Logbox 720. Today we're gonna collect some more stuff around the theater district and showdown town and do some more of Logbox 720. So let's go get started. The first thing we're gonna do is go over and talk to our boy Bottles over here. This guy's got a lot of information for us, so let's just go get right to it. Hello, I'm Bottles. Remember, I used to be dead, but fortunately I got over that. This is the town's tourist information booth where you can find all kinds of help and info if you get stuck. Well, there's a few things he has. First off, he's got free information and some pay information. Let's go check out the free stuff first. And he's got a category right here, Stuff Already Learned. This is going to be a bunch of very basic game tutorial type stuff. So if you need any help on any of these categories, go ahead and check it out. There's also other useful stuff, which again is more basic game stuff, which we've mostly covered ourselves here, all the way down to here. We haven't really covered police yet, but we'll get to that. Uh, we've also got useless rubbish, so let's go check that out. Are you of any use? No, I'm useless. I can't even see where I'm going. Is that what you wanted to hear? So harsh. I guess we're a little bit mean to bottles sometimes. I don't know what that staticky sound is in the background. That is in the game. It's not my microphone or anything. I guess there's some electric guy standing next to us. Here we've got, where's Mrs. Bottles? Mrs. Bottles was moved down by Grunty in one of her vehicles. Wait, I said earlier that she was safe at home in Spiral Mountain, didn't I? Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with Mrs. Bottles there. Did you enjoy being dead? Well, it has its plus points, but on the whole, I'd have to say the Mortal Coil shuffling experience is overrated. And we've also got, who is this log guy? Oh, there's a few more questions here. Who's this log guy? This log guy happens to be the man, the big cheese, the supreme being, the creator. Stay on his good side. I guess we'll have to try to do that, even though Log is kind of a big butthead. Uh, what do you know about Killer Instinct 3? Of course, Killer Instinct was a rare title. I believe on the Xbox One they finally made a Killer Instinct sequel, but I'm not sure if Rare actually made it. Not sure about that, but, well, it's a game. It's a fighting game. Uh, can you tell me how to win? Easy, play better, be less rubbish. Didn't expect that, did you? And the last one, we'll get past this dialogue in just a second, guys. Any fashion advice? I hear the trilby is very fashionable among the programming fraternity nowadays. Anyways, that's it for bottles. Well, he does also have some pay stuff, actually. So right here, show me something cool. And this stuff, it does cost two notes each. But don't worry, if you, if you collect all the notes in the game, you'll be able to afford all these things from here, as well as all the items from the shop, and all of the blueprints from the shop. And he shows us the top of Log Mountain. We've already, uh, we've already seen that. Thanks a lot, Bottles. Well, let's go check out the second thing right here. He's got three spots he can show us. And the second one, he'll show us over next to Boggy's Gym, where the Ice Key Box is. Another thing we already got. Well, show me something amazing. I'm spending gosh dang two notes for this. I hope this is amazing, but bear in mind, it was pretty cheap. Ah, bear in mind. And he shows off the dock right here. Once again, another thing we've already done. He's basically giving us a recap of the last episode, because this is all stuff we did then. But the thing I actually came here for is Trapdoor Tower number one combination. So let's go ahead and buy that crud, and that will give us a combo so we can go unlock a crate that's stuck inside this trapdoor over here. So we'll go get to that. And uh, the code right there is 1930. He's also got an option right here called Stop and Swap Truth. Of course, just joking about Stop and Swap, even though we know exactly what's going on. There is not 6,000 notes in the game, so you cannot buy this unless you hack the game. If you do decide to hack the game, he'll basically say, I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. And we can't do that in this game because the rating, uh, the rating or whatever, because it's like an E-rated game. So that's the thing. But let's move on. Let's go start collecting. What I'm going to do is actually go over this way. It kind of connects back to where the theater district is going to be. But I want to go down this little 
what do you call this, a canal, I guess? Now, to get these notes here, you have to drive right underneath them. The trolley's not going to pick them up. Banjo himself has to touch them. So we've got to do a pretty good job at actually driving straight. Kind of missed one right there, but we got to go back anyways. So I'm just kind of grabbing things along the way here. And there's going to be a couple little side paths we want to check out as well. Let's just go over here, grab this five. We'll come to this spot in a second to grab that crate up there. A little bit awkward to do right now. You know what? I'm just going to hop out of my vehicle to grab this five because the water's a little bit deep and we can't really float quite yet. Eventually we will. Come on, grab this guy. Oh, gosh dang it. And there is Mr. Fit again. You could buy a different uh, trapdoor combination from him, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. But right here, we've got a little side section so we can grab a 10 note as well as a crate right here. We'll grab that in a second, but I actually want to go up right here because we get access to another stop and swap crate. This is the blue one. So let's go ahead and grab that. I'm just going to toss it down for now, but we do also have some notes to get. Oh, crud. I didn't mean to do that. On the bright side, there is a shortcut. If we just drive kind of around this way, instead of going through the canal, you can actually squeeze in like right around here through this building. So let me do that instead. We'll just go back through here and go up the pipe again. And, well, you know what? Oh, gosh, Banjo, get off the wall, you crud. Let's go ahead and take this box. We'll just go put it in our car since our car's over here now. And let's go climb back up top here. So we just got to try to not walk on top of the slanted roof tiles or whatever because they are pretty slippery. Let's make sure I actually got all the notes. Did I get the one over here? I think I did. No, I did not. So let's go over and grab that guy. Not walk on the slippery roofs this time. So let's go down to the left here. Got to do some more parkour, some more platforming action. We've got some stuff off in the distance. Don't worry about that crud too much. Now, on these little roofs here, you really want to stay on the middle section. If you go to the sides, you'll slip like we did before. And over here, we are going to have a tightrope section. And we could walk across that, but it's a really long tightrope, so I don't really feel like doing that. Instead, we're just going to go across in style. So we'll just jump up here. And what we'll do is, if you do your spinny attack, this one, and you do it off an edge, you can jump out of it mid-air. So let's go ahead and oh, slip a little bit here, I guess. Whoops. Let's just go like that. Jump, and we can attack just like that. And we're across. So let's see if we can jump our way back up to here without sliding off. And there we go. So we can kind of do stuff that's been a part of Rare Games for a long time. If you go all the way back to, like, Donkey Kong Country, in that game, you can roll off the side of a, of a mountain or a cliff or whatever, and you can jump in midair as well. So it's kind of been a thing in Rare Games for a long time. But there we got pretty much everything I wanted to get. Let's go back to our car here. There we go. And I guess I'll also pick up the blue box right here. So let's take that, put it in our car, and let's now go to Boggy's Gym. Let's just take a warp pad. I guess I could go turn these crates in. You know, I'll just throw them in a pile right here. Uh, I'll turn it all in at once. We're going to be getting a lot of crates today. So there we go. You know what's crazy, guys, is by the end of today, we'll be about a third done. Let's go to uh, the docks right here. We'll be about a third of the way done with Showdown Town already, and we're only in part five. We have been doing a lot of Showdown Town, it's true, but as we progress through the game, it'll be less and less about Showdown Town, more about sinking our teeth into lots of missions. But here I do want to go and buy some more strength upgrades. So we're going to get our strength maxed out right there. We'll come back for stamina a little bit later, but I just want strength for now. So let's get back into our car, and let's go off to the left right here, because there's an NPC right here. I'm not going to talk to him now, but if we talk to this guy, this is Officer Picklet, and if we talk to him, he'll activate a little side quest. We could do part of the side quest now, but not all of it, so I kind of want to wait and do it all in one go a little bit later in the game, or actually quite a bit later. We'll eventually get to that, but for now, let's just go on top of the police station right here, grab this crate here, and let's drop that one down on top of our car. And I also want to go over this way, because if we go along this tightrope, it'll take us to the floor. No, I, I want to go on top of this tightrope, because if we go along this tightrope, it'll take us on top of the trapdoor tower right here. That we can... Oh, don't fall, Banjo! Uh, we can use that combination we got from bottles to open it. So, we also get a crate from this, as well as all the notes that you can see up here. So let's just hop off at the end. One thing I should mention, I don't think I ever pointed this out, but you can jump off of the tight ropes. However, if you're teetering when you jump, you'll just fall to the ground. You won't get any jump height. So don't jump when you're teetering or you'll just totally fall. Only jump when you're pretty well balanced. All right, there we go. We got all this. Oh, one more. There we go. So now let's grab onto this wrenched bolt. He'll tell us the combination that we got. 1930. So let's go ahead and put that in. And for doing that, the bottom of the thing will unlock. The crate falls out. And there you go. So let's go back to our car. We'll go down and grab that crate. But I know we've got like four crates so far, but we are nowhere near getting all the crates we're going to get today. We've got a lot more to go still. I know last time we, I said we would do Logbox uh, 720 Act 2 and 3, and maybe even part of 4. 
But no, I think we'll just probably get to two today because there's so many crates that I wanted to get. But like I said, as we progress through the game, it'll become less and less about Showdown Town because we've already got so much stuff and we'll only be getting little bits and pieces as we get new vehicle parts for our trolley that give us access to more stuff. So with that out of the way, let's now go over this way and go up top here. And I want to go all the way across. Actually, no, no, no. I forgot to get one thing in the canal, didn't I? So let's go back over here. And I'm actually going to carry my car up here because it's a little bit of a lip and our car can't drive up that. So we have to pick our car up manually and then drive it up here. So we'll grab yet another crate right here, number 27. And if we go over here, we've got a little pipe we can climb up and grab crate number 29 as well. I don't think you're meant to get these until we get the floaters for our vehicle. But, well, if you just pick your vehicle up and put it up here, you can get it no problem. So let me go put these on top of Mumbo Mo Mumbo's motors as well. Yeah, my bad for forgetting to do that earlier. I meant to get those crates a little bit earlier while I was already in the canal, but kind of forgot. A lot of stuff to collect, so, you know, brain farts will happen. Not a big deal, though. Let's go ahead and grab these and put them in place. There we go. You can see our stack is now up to six crates. Now we're going to go explore a little bit more of the theater district. So let's go over this way and go up this slippery ramp. If we go up here, we're going to have this bridge, but there's a gap in the middle. So we got to be very careful as we drive across. We want to get enough speed so we can jump it and not do that, Banjo. Gosh dang it, would you just get a little bit better? Okay, there we go. Let's just drive across just like that. Grab all these notes, and there will be another crate over here as well. So let's hop out. Let's go ahead and grab crate number 12. Put that one inside our car. And no, we are still not done yet, but I do want to go grab these notes over here, as well as these. And also down there, you can see there is the Jiggo vent for Logbox. We've got two Jiggies in there from last time, but we'll get that a little bit later. So now let's drive down. Not like that, Banjo. Not like this, dude. Let's drive down and let's go to this area. We've got another crate right here sitting on top of this statue. So let's go ahead and grab that guy. But we're not going to stop there. We're also going to grab the statue itself because we can. Now, because we got all the strength upgrades, it's pretty easy to move around. If we did not get the strength upgrades, this would be very, very awkward to carry. But if it gets stuck, just press the left trigger and it'll start to flip it. And it'll make it a lot easier. So I want to go over here, knock down this little bit of bridge. And let's set this down right here. Yeah, let's get a little bit closer there, and we can use this to climb up top again This is another item. We're not meant to get yet, but this isn't really a glitch So I don't mind getting it early. This is more of just kind of like a I guess it's more of like an exploit So let's go ahead and get that guy. That's yet another crate going in the trolley And I'm gonna get that crate right up there crate number eight So I just have to walk around to get that one. Well, here is my giant pile of crates I guess let's go ahead and get this poop moved over to mumbo's motors. Oh my gosh. Don't spill him bitch Of course he drops just one just one Well, let's go ahead and pick him up Put them in the pile. We've got a giant pile of crates right here. Well, that is now a pile of, what is that, like nine crates? No, it's actually ten crates. Wow. But we are still not done. Now, I didn't get this crate earlier in the game, even though we could have got this back in part one, just because I didn't want to bog things down too much early on. But there's another crate you guys may have noticed up there. We're meant to get a vehicle part that'll boost us up a little bit later, but we can do some sick parkour, so we might as well go ahead and grab this guy. So all we can do is just jump right here, jump on top of the flower bed, jump and attack over this way, and there you go, we're on top of the building. Like I said, this game really doesn't block you off from stuff too often. Of course, there's like the laser fences, but for the most part, if you can actually physically get somewhere, you can get that crate. And this is actually a really fantastic crate, so... I probably should have got it earlier, but again, I just didn't want to bog things down too much earlier. But since we're doing kind of like a giant crate collection episode today, I figure now's a good time to throw it in. So let's go ahead and grab these notes. And also, another thing I wasn't planning to do, but let's go ahead and throw this in. Right here is going to be a tightrope to another uh, trapdoor tower. This is where we use the code from Mr. Fit. So I'm going to go get the code from Mr. Fit now. But first, let me move this crate back over into the pile. Now, Mr. Fit can stop in quite a few locations, but... The easiest one to remember, wow, right on cue, he can stop right over here. You can only talk to him when he stopped, and we'll just wait for him right here. Eventually, he'll stop. We can talk to him. Buy the code for 10. Do I have 10? Oh, I've got 130. We're good to go on notes here. So let's wait for him. There we go. Let's go give him a chat. Puff, puff, pant, pant. Hello. Oh, just puff, pant. He didn't double those up. Oh, hello. It's me, Mr. Fit. I just did an hour of push-ups between something or other. Tower combination for sale if you're interested. New running shoes don't come cheap. Alrighty, we'll buy that for 10, and that, like I said, is going to be the one right over here. And this one will give us a very awesome item. I'm not going to show too much off with this awesome item once we get it, 
I will eventually, but not right away, because we're doing enough today as it is. But let's go back up top, walk along that tightrope, and I guess this is a good chance to show you there's another way we could do sick parkour to get on top of this building. You don't have to go along the front. You can also jump right over here, jump on top of this spot, grab onto this sign, jump up like that, and up we are. We're up on top. So now let's jump up to the top here, go along the tightrope, and you know what? The tightrope tight ropes takes so along. I'll just meet you guys on the other side here. There we go, let's go do it! So the code is 8684. Now keep in mind, this is going to be different for every game, and you can't actually guess at it. Unless you buy the code, you can't actually do this. So you can't just sit there and guess what it is until you get it right or anything like that. Alrighty, so let's go down, grab crate number 31, and let's put that one in our car and go back to Mumbo's Motors. There we go, that is all the crates we're going to get for now, but I want to build up the suspense a little bit more about seeing what we're actually going to get. So let's go grab some more notes in Theater District, finish up our collection in this side of Showdown Town here. Really not much over here, just a bunch of notes, so, well, let's go get them. Some of them are actually pretty well hidden, so you want to make sure you check all the different nooks and crannies. Although when you get close, it'll tend to put that outline around it, which will really help out. But there's one inside here underneath that little canopy, I guess. One here, and some are even inside these little rooms, so you gotta watch out for that. This one in particular can be pretty hard to find if you don't walk up near it. So there we go, we've got all the notes for this area. Now let's go check out all of those crates. 11 crates in total, let's go talk to Mumbo and see what we have got. First off, we get a medium engine. This is from the one that was on top of Humble Wumba's thing. We also get a medium ammo from that and a bunch of heavy uh, body pieces right here. Awesome. We also get two small ammos, a small engine, Another egg turret. I don't know why you'd ever want two egg turrets, but we've got two of them. More light items, bringing us up to like 200 of each of these, which we can actually never use that many. We've got mole on a pole. What does that even do? I think this is from the uh, from the stop and swap thing, so I'm pretty sure it's just co cosmetic there. We've also got more standard wings, a gyroscope. I'll have to show this one off at some point. It's kind of hard to explain, but it basically lets us do like flips in the air and crud. It's very awkward. We've got some sinkers, which are very, very heavy items, and they'll pretty much do what they say. They'll sink you to the bottom of water, so if you want a vehicle that goes along the bottom of water, there you go. We've got Fulgore's Fist. We've got a Sticky Ball. Don't laugh at the name, guys. This is a very handy item. You basically, you equip it. You can shoot it out. It'll stick onto items. Very good for picking things up if you don't want to put them in your tray and worry about dropping them. So I'll use a lot of that later on. We've got some spotlights. Pretty self-explanatory. A Liquid Squirter, which just shoots out water. That'll come in handy for some missions coming up. Got more spoilers for better vehicle handling. A suck and blow. This is from the Mr. Fit one where we got the uh, the code, went to the top. This item right here is another very awesome one. You can do a lot of cool stuff with this that'll be showing off in the future, but basically it sucks things in or blows them away. We got another small fuel. We got some bumpers right there. And that's it. That is from our 11 crates. As you can see here, we now have 26 out of 57 crates. We're almost halfway done with crates right there. And you can see we're more than halfway done with notes. It's pretty awesome. But what do you say we go and do Logbox 720 Act 2? This is going to be a pretty straightforward place. There's only two missions, just like there was in Logbox 1. However, both of these missions are Log's Choice. Wait, there's one thing I want to do. Both of the Jiggy missions are Log's Choice, but one of the Jinjo missions is not, and I want to actually use a specific thing for that. So let's go to Humba. There's a blueprint I want to buy, and I want to buy the Humba Cage. So, there we go. And now I'm just going to go into the vehicle database, load up the Humba blueprint right here, just to give us like a starting point, because I do want to edit this one a little bit here. And all I'm going to do is add all the engines onto it. So we've got three medium engines. We're just going to stick them in there, just like that. And we'll take our other small engine and just, I don't know, put it on there. There you go. I'm going to paint it a nice peach color and give it a good name. Alrighty, Logbox 720 Act 2. Let's go get started. Here we are. And of course, as always, the first thing I want to do is go over to my Crowd Mobile. Because it's got the Speco Spy on it, we can actually see where the Jinjo missions are. And one is right down here. So it's pretty easy to find. Let's just... Not crashing everything, not get killed by grunt bots. Let's go talk to the or orange ginger right here. Jolly good, a playmate there. Uh, there aren't too many around here. Yeah, this is what I built the Nicholas Cage for. We're going to use this one because we've got another round of Jinjo combat. Now this one, ah, man, he could drive under us. And if he does that, it's going to be pretty annoying. Hopefully that won't happen. We just want to be very careful. We don't want to ram into him too hard or he'll actually go under us. So let's wait for him to move to one of the sides. There we go. We'll just try to scoop him up and kind of gently, gently banjo. Gosh dang it, he went right under us. He's pushing. I'm trying so hard to push back against him. Oh, just back it up. You know, we'll just go reverse right here. Hopefully he doesn't go to the side. And he doesn't. Well, 
That didn't really go as I planned for it, but it still worked, so I guess that that's good. Let's go ahead and call back our vehicle and not get killed by grunt bots. What the crud, man? All right, let's call back our vehicle, and now we're going to go into the center of the stage because we've got a mission right here with Humba Wumba. Let's go give her a chat. Too many challenges for Humba's super all-girl gaming clan. Race held to prove best hand-eye coordination. Banjo, join in. I mean, I guess we'll join in. Or if you like, is there any, is there an all boys gaming clan too? I don't know if there is. I don't really, I've never been a part of a gaming clan. That might be hard to believe because I play so many games. I mean, I guess I've been part of World of Warcraft guilds, but I don't know if that counts as a clan. Beat amateur comp uh, competitors and chips away Grand Prix and Humba something or other. I think it should let us join the team or some crud like that. I kind of missed it right there. I'm slow at reading sometimes, guys. But let's go ahead and get started. She's going to just show off the course. We have to do Log's Choice, and I'm going to be honest, this vehicle is a nightmare. It is terrible. This mission is really hard to get a trophy on, unless we're very clever and we just edit our vehicle. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to build ourselves a nice little motorcycle right here. So let's go ahead and stick that medium engine right there. Let's grab our chair, put that up front. We'll grab one of these wheels, move that. Uh, actually, I need to go grab some fuel first. Let's go grab the fuel tank here. We'll put that one up here. Let's go grab the wheel, put that guy up front, and then we're going to grab all these little body pieces that are connected to us and remove them. But one more thing we really need to do is we want to go to the wheels and press right bumper. Doing this will actually let us change how the wheel works. So you can set it to automatic, you can do driven, steering, driven and steering, or freewheeling, which is just kind of, I don't even know what that does. So let's go to driven and steering just like that. I think freewheeling means it can rotate, but you don't have control over it. But we want the front wheel to rotate, and we want the back wheel to be on just driven. And that'll give us the best vehicle handling. So there we go. If you don't have a, a uh, driven wheel in the front, you're going to have a bad time. But you can see, even with all these edits, we're only barely faster than our competitors. If you've got the normal vehicle, it's a pain in the butt. Back in the day, this mission was a part of the Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts speedrun that I used to do. And before I knew about editing the vehicle like this, well, a lot of the times your speedrun would die here because you would just mess up. Sometimes the vehicle has a mind of its own, or because it has all those little leg things on the side, your vehicle would like get interlocked and stuck against other vehicles and you just couldn't get off. And because of that, you just wouldn't get the trophy, and that wastes a lot of time in a speedrun. And in a casual playthrough, it's frustrating to not get the trophy. But with this vehicle edit, it's not too bad. You do have to be careful right here with the wheels, just like that. The spinning disc will try to throw you off, so you got to watch out for that. But this vehicle has pretty good handling, so it's not too bad to get back on track and just keep going like that. So we got one more lap here. This is a three-lap race, and as you can see, we're pretty much way ahead of our opponents. Even with the edited vehicle, if you crash a couple of times, you might still get second place. This is one of the harder race missions that we've dealt with so far. Actually, probably the hardest because this is the first race where it's been Log's Choice, so we can't have our own custom super fast vehicle. But we're just about done, we just gotta drive through this last point, and there you go! We finished it, and we got the trophy as well. Floor wiped with useless boys, Banjo take all prizes, enjoy success until showdown town with Humba's Hag Trolls. Alright, I think she's trying to build like a hag troll gaming team or some crud. But let's move on. Let's just go hop into our vehicle. And we want to go up this ramp right here and hook right. Because there's going to be a Jinjo mission somewhere up here. Uh, we got to go past this little purple drink uh, fountain, I guess. And we want to go over to the left. And that's where the Jinjo mission is going to be. So let's go talk to him. This one's going to be a Jinjo taxi mission. So it's going to be pretty straightforward. This one's going to be Log's Choice as usual. And, well, the same taxi vehicle that we've dealt with before. It's actually a pretty short taxi mission, but you gotta be careful not to run into these mice because then the Jinjo might hop out of the taxi, and that's no good. So we just wanna go over the ramp right here, and then ramp off right here. Try not to fall, try not to fall. Oh boy, we lost our Jinjo. Thankfully, we didn't fall. If you lose the Jinjo and fall at the same time, you probably just wanna start the mission over. And after that, we just drop down like that, and back it up a little bit. And there you go. Very, very easy Jinjo mission. And give us that green coin. Now we've got one more Jiggy mission here. It's on the other side. I don't think I mentioned this before, but on the mini map, you can see there's actually different colors for the icons. If it's red, that means it's below you. If it's blue, it means that they're above you. And if it's green, it means they're basically on the same level as you. So it kind of helps you navigate the stage a little bit better. 
but let's go talk to uh, Bottles right here. He doesn't really have much to say. Basically, there's a bunch of lights turned on and it hurts his eyes, so he wants us to go turn the lights off. That's all there really is to it. So we'll just hop into our log choice vehicle once again. Got a helicopter right here, but I'm pretty decent at dealing with helicopter controls. So we just have to go to these wrench bolts and stop these things. Now you want to make sure before you hop out of your vehicle that you bring it to a complete stop. Otherwise, your vehicle might just keep flying without you and you'll totally lose it, which is not going to be great. Now, in situations like this where you have to go down, it's best to just kind of let go of the joystick and then use the left trigger. And that'll put, put you pretty much straight down. So there's number two, and now we just have to go get the third one. A very easy trophy if you're decent at controlling a helicopter. If not, well, it's a good time to practice at least because there's not really any enemies in your way, anything like that. Right there, because this is the last one, doesn't really matter that the vehicle flies off because we're done with the mission anyways. And there you go, we got the trophy, and that is actually going to be it for Logbox Act 2. A very, very short mission, or very short act right there. And there we go, we're done. But we are going to go ahead and wrap things up there for today. I hope you guys don't mind that we took an episode to collect a lot more crates. We still got one of the acts done. But if you've been waiting for an episode that is just lots of missions and not dealing with a bunch of showdown town, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but next episode, or I guess it'll be tomorrow probably, but next episode is definitely going to be the one you want to watch. We'll do Nutty Acres, or Vlogbox, Act 3, as well as unlock a new game world and do two acts from that one. So we'll do three entire acts next episode. So I will see you guys then. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.